Hey everybody, welcome back. Northern Lion, the Binding of Isaac after Earth Plus. A, a, a small streak of a million dollars, but look at this, Elsa. WQJF13H6, you thought I was gonna be stoked um, that we were starting with Mega? Absolutely not. Excuse me, I'd like the money, please. Probably not the best use of our uh, resources here, but uh, what's done is done. Um, no, I'm not stoked about uh, Mega. I mean, sure, it's pretty good or whatever. If you'll excuse me, I'm trying to pass. <laughs> hold on, hold on. The volume is cranked way too loud. I can barely hear myself think. We should go check our item room. I will also say I'm out of sorts. Not in like a, you know, an emotional way. Like, out of sorts is, is an English idiom. Meaning, like, I, I, I don't feel necessarily normal. I don't I feel a little disorganized. But it's only because I'm a creature of habit. And I am up, uh, not, not in, a, like, a bad way, but I'm up earlier than usual. And I feel weird, because I, I, I don't want it to be taken as a complaint. But I, I feel weird about it. Um, because it's actually, like, a big positive and a big positive as well. Last night, the baby slept. Um, from about 11.30 until 7, which is like more than I slept when I was in high school, which is awesome, don't get me wrong. However, I wanted to get a little extra time after that. The, the time does not exist, because then you, you know, you feed the baby, oh, you change the diaper, you feed the baby. After that's done, you change the diaper again, um, and then the baby, it, it does a little thing I call the pacifier tango, which is where she cries because she wants the pacifier. Um, and I'm not talking about the 2003 uh, film starring Vin Diesel. I made a joke about the pacifier on Twitter, not the movie starring Vin Diesel, but the, the word. I said, you ever think about how metal it is that, you know, the name, the pacifier, is just, like, such an archaic description of what the device does. Like, oh, the baby's crying again? No worries. Bring out the pacifier. Like, it sounds like some kind of medieval torture device, right? Um, and then a lot of people mentioned the Vin Diesel film of the, of the same name, which I was already familiar with, of course. It was a surprise hit at the box office in, I believe, March of 2003. I think it made over $100 million, which is, A... a uh, rare for a Vin Diesel film that doesn't contain cars, and then B, um, really rare for a, 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 a children's movie in the spring that is not animated. You know what I mean? Like, kids' movies can make a lot of money, don't get me wrong, the, the Disney's and Pixar's is of the world, but for a live action, oh, why would I try it? For a live action Vin Diesel-led film? bit surprising. Anyway, what was I talking about? Somebody had the audacity to say, uh, yeah, that's why Dwayne The Rock Johnson made a movie about it. That's the Tooth Fairy, dummy. It's a completely different movie. I believe in the pacifier, um, muscle-bound, okay, very scary, actually. Muscle-bound hero Vin Diesel. Maybe used to work for, like, the FBI or the CIA or the police or something like that, but then he gets assigned to, like, be the daycare provider for a family in the witness protection program. I don't know, I, I've never seen it to be honest. I'm just um, kind of tangentially aware of its existence. Um, you know what, we should buy a key if there is one. There's not one. It's like it, surprisingly scary floor here while we wait for Mega to recharge, but that's fine. Um, the Tooth Fairy, I don't remember really how it goes down, but it's kind of like a, a redux of the Santa Claus where Tim Allen becomes uh, Santa Claus due to, like, accidentally causing the death due to negligence of the original Santa Claus. Um, I, I believe that it's something happens like that with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. All of a sudden, he is forced uh, to become the Tooth Fairy going around and, you know, collecting the teeth for whatever nefarious purposes we've, we've touched upon earlier. Um, anyway, so she... she Goes into pacifier limbo, which is what I call it. Um, she wants the pacifier, I give her the pacifier. And then she goes... And then she spits the pacifier out, and then she goes, wah, wah. So we did that for like an hour and a half, which was... It was a good time, it was pretty fun. 
I think we all got a, an equivalent amount of enjoyment out of that game. Um, but I, again, I'm not really uh, complaining. Because, uh, I mean, I did get... I did, you know, it wasn't... I didn't sleep, like, from 11.30 to 7. You get, I slept from, like, midnight until, you know, maybe, like, 6.30. But it's still really good. I'm not complaining. If anything, I, I bring it up not to be braggadocious. But rather to, you know, because if we ever go through, like, you know, bad sleep regression stuff, which apparently is something that happens as the baby gets a little bit older, I can go back and be reminded or, or forcibly be reminded by other people, maybe, that, like, hey, remember? You know, it might suck right now, but uh, remember back in the newborn phase when she was, like, a, a one out of 100 baby sleeping pretty much through the entire night? Now, the only thing I'll say, because you might be saying... Seven and a half hours, it's like six and a half hours, it's not so bad. It isn't. Like, genuinely, it's really good. However, and you knew there was a however coming. I'm coming from a, a previously childless frame of reference. Where, when you sleep badly, uh, eventually, and I know that, like, sleep catch-up is a myth, but it doesn't really feel like a myth when you're in it, right? Like, if you have, like, a bad night of sleep, or even, like, in high school, I would sleep, like, less than I should have Monday to Friday. And then Saturday, Sunday, I would, uh, be a little bit more, you know, I'd sleep in. Even then, like, I didn't sleep in as much as I could, because I was like, oh, these are my only days to stay awake. You know what? It's only seven cents. So, to, to pay two cents to get a bunch of, you basically save a bunch of keys seems pretty nice. I actually really do like the blanket. How did we get so much money, dude? This is a uh, big pog. Yeah, actually, jumper cable seems super helpful. When you consider that Mega takes forever to charge. We're definitely getting a deal with the devil on the next floor. Um, so, yeah, like, I'm used to, like, when you have some fitful sleep. You know, maybe you've been at, like, you know, camping or something like that. The first night that you go home, you're like, oh, I gotta sleep like a baby. That, that doesn't exist here, you know, which is fine. But you get six and a half hours, pretty much straight through, and you go, you know what? That's that's going to have to do it. We're just, I, I accept it eventually that, uh, you know, I, I, I could sit there and look at my phone for the next, uh, you know, four hours waiting for the baby to fall asleep so I could take a 45-minute nap, or I could just, yeah, it's probably worth it. Or I could just bite the, oh, why not use the hanged man on that one? It's a perfect opportunity to use the hanged man. So I'm not necessarily complaining about a lack of sleep. All I'm saying is that one good night, it, it doesn't immediately... Well, actually, one decent night <laughs> doesn't immediately um, negate the effects. But you know what? I'm, I'm feeling good about it. Because previously... I, I mean, it's up to you. What would you rather have? Because this is the, the... And both of them are pretty good. But the two kinds of nights we've had lately are like, you know, sleep... 10 to 3, wake up like 3 to 4, 3 to 4.30 to do baby maintenance. And uh, then maybe go back to sleep from like uh, 5 until 8 or 9. Or would you rather just go straight through like 12 to 6, 12 to 5.30? I think I'd rather go straight through. So, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm just bringing it up out of it's a human interest story. All right, this was this was not a good floor. We got hit a lot with Mega, which is embarrassing, but we did get our deal with the Devil. We got a very, very solid deal with the Devil item, which is nice for me. We're probably going to be totally fine on this run. Don't get me wrong. But uh, getting your damage up over four, it's a good start. <laughs> you know what? Maybe that's why we saved our... Uh... Oh, maybe that's why we saved Hangman, dude. Getting your damage over seven. That's pretty sick, too. All right. So is Daddy Longlegs. Turns out, when I said this was a bad floor, what I meant is this is an awesome floor. But let me caffeinate a little. I will say, and I, I've talked about this, I don't know, way too much lately, because we're not leaving the house for anything. You know, there's there's different... What I, what I was going to transition to is a conversation about sleep and how... You know, you might, I, I, I think there's people out there 
Well, like, okay, because I'm, you know, uh, I don't know if anyone else has heard of this website called Reddit, but, you know, occasionally I peruse Reddit. I would not self-describe myself as a Redditor, but um, regardless, there was a thread that was like, what do people need to stop romanticizing? And, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably a little bit older than maybe the average Reddit demo now, or I have a different perspective, but there were a lot of things in the thread I agreed with. Like, one of the things that came up was, like, overworking. I completely agree, and we've talked about it before, you know? I, uh... I have romanticized overworking, for one. And then, on top of that, I, I... On a very technical, legal level, I own my own business. If there's any time that you could overwork, you know, and not feel like you're kind of... You know, boss makes a dollar, I make a dime, that's why I poop on company time. It would be when, you know, you're the boss. I mean, technically, Google is the boss, because they take, I don't know, an undisclosed portion of the sales uh, from the advertisements right off the top, but, you know, disregarding that, because I don't want to think about it. Hold on. It's an item, right? It's an item? It's a, it's a good item. And this should be second secret room. But I, I definitely agree with that. But another one I would throw in there is uh, people who, who are proud of the fact that they get low amounts of sleep. If you want to get a low amount of sleep because it helps you get more done during the day and you and you value that more highly, I, I think that's fine. You've, you've made a decision, you know? But uh, I actually, like... Weirdly enough, I this is maybe the first time in my life that I actually feel guilty about kind of throwing in the towel on sleep and waking up earlier to get some work done because I feel like what it basically means is that I'm not going to be as there as I could be at like 10 p.m. tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm recognizing it as almost like an inherently selfish action. But it really was either that or... Um, you know, basically just play the pacifier game, which is not a game that, that either baby or father really enjoys, but... Anyway. I, we, we should hit... I mean, it's a weird time for anecdotes for the obvious baby reason, but also for the also obvious, like, you know, pandemic reason. Uh, kind of been quiet on the pandemic stuff. This because we've been a little bit distracted with the baby stuff. You know, it's been kind of a big year for a lot of different things, I suppose. Um, but anyway, like, we're... There's lots of competing baby advice out there. The baby advice that we read is don't uh, take unnecessary trips outside with your newborn until they're like a month old. Because, you know, they got to build up like their immune system. And, you know, they're, they're doing all sorts of building in that first month that is you know, very important, and you, you don't want anything to happen to disrupt it. Um, which is obvious, or I, I suppose uh, logical, I should say. Um, but then on top of that, there's also now the, uh, you know, like the, the COVID stuff is, is popping off to a huge degree here again, unfortunately. You know, when, when I've been the angriest about it in these videos was back when British Columbia had like, you know, 80 cases a day or something like that. And the other day we had... 279 so it's uh it sucks but on the bright side you know baby is ready to go outside soon <laughs> perfect timing but no we'll like uh i i am unreasonably excited to to at least get outside and like you know go for walks i think i mentioned this in an isaac episode you'll have to forgive a little bit of mental fog on the subject but um like I have been outside to the grocery store, and I almost feel, this is like 95% a joke, but I do almost feel like Kate resents me for being able to go to the grocery store sometimes, because she's been basically trapped inside for so long. <laughs> like when I, I have to like, this the same way, uh, you know, a, a, a guy might ask for, or anybody really might ask for like, uh, Hey, honey, uh, my buddy from college is in town and we made a tea time at the golf course. I hope that's okay. That's like me, like, hey, we're out of bananas. I'd really like to sneak out to the grocery store if possible. 
Oh, you, wait, she doesn't actually say this, but let's pretend she does. Oh, I see. Well, I'm trapped here with the baby. You're gonna sneak out and run an errand for your own leisure? Does this seem, does this seem fair to you? But pretty soon we'll be able to take that. I mean, I think it's probably overkill. Like, I, I think you could probably take a baby out a little faster, but at the same time, why not, you know, try to do everything as as by the book as possible, you know? This is one of those things, um, you know, it's pretty major in life. I'm, I'm contented to have read and followed the owner's manual. Sure, we'll take that. Like, this is not a used car. It's a new baby. It's a new baby! <laughs> I was just uh, sorry. I've been watching a lot of the prices right lately, cause uh, you know, I sometimes find myself in front of the TV at like 11 or 12 uh, a.m. slash p.m. Dude, I don't even get me started. So I I've been cooking this bit up for like 10 years. I hate the 12 hour clock. I hate the 24 hour clock, cause I feel like it's a way for people to just seem like more like. Like they have military intelligence clearing or some clearance or something. They instead of being like, yeah, uh, 1700 o'clock. Just say 5 p.m., okay? You work for the bank. Stop trying to seem like you're on SEAL Team Cease. Um, I'm gonna joke her right away because I, I have some impatience here. But I, I just, I have a one very simple question about the 12 hour clock. Why on earth is the first hour of the day 12 you know like why doesn't i know this is gonna sound maybe ridiculous why don't you just start like why don't you make the first hour when the when the night ticks over into the next day one or zero because i recognize you know look i'm more of a c sharp than a lua guy so i definitely would prefer if they would just make it zero but you know why on earth does it start at 12 and then go to 1? Like, why does it go 11 p.m., 12 a.m.? It just seems stupid. Am, am I... Like, you just learn it. Like any stupid thing in the world, you just learn it. And then you don't think about it. And I think the initial hunch that people have is like, well, because I learned it, everybody should have to learn it this way. It's not that hard. Well, you're not wrong. It's not that hard, but is it the most logical way for the system to work? Look, I'll be straight up with you. It might not be worth changing at this point because so many people are on it, but that is also the argument for keeping the Imperial system, and we all know how the internet feels about that. But sincerely, I just, I need to know if there's a genuine reason why the clock starts Honestly, I do think Me Mega's fine, but this is gonna be this is what we need for that quick injection. Um, why on earth would it start at twelve and then go to one? It just doesn't make any sense to me. And I, I some of the reasons you're cooking up, I like because the clock is designed that you could just make you could just shift all the numbers on the clock. You know, like 30 degrees to the left. <laughs> and it would be... It's not like the cl they dug up like the Rosetta clock. And they're like, all clocks must be made in this image. You know, they, the clock is a design thing. I bet when the first clock was designed, the person who was commissioned to design it was like, so you want me to start this son of a gun at 12? Even though that's the 12th number? And they were like, yeah, I don't know. It's just what our boss came up with. Just shut up and make the circle funny, man. We don't pay you to think. We pay you to tinker. It just, it, it, it's insanity to me. Anyway, long story short. I do think, look, as much as I've, I think that if you use a 24-hour clock in a 12-hour world, you're putting on airs. I will say that, it, you know, the idea of a 24-hour clock makes way more sense on a logical level. Like, why, why chain yourself to a 12-hour plus, like, suffix world? 
when instead there's you know I mean, it's not like we have less than 24 numbers in the in the world so like when they're designing time they're like what comes after 12 I don't know man we haven't gotten that far in the lesson yet okay just good <laughs> well no sorry what comes after 11 I should say <laughs> anyway it's stupid in my opinion is the long and the short of it but it's also you know we've learned it so we're stuck with it I guess I mean it's not really like I'll be honest we got bigger problems there might have been some like municipal elections in my life where I would be like hey, if somebody promises to fix this clock situation they got my vote we, we got bigger fish to fry but you know maybe we'll get back there someday um, but yeah, I've been watching The Price is Right. I always think, like, dude... So, I, I'm a big fan of The Price is Right. I'll watch it when it's on. And I think that, honestly, I'm I'm pretty good at it. Like, to be straight up with you, I'm pretty good at... And it's a it's not a great skill. Uh, but I think I am pretty good at knowing the prices of things. Like, they did this game, okay? And there's... you To win $10,000... They give you like six products. I don't know why I said it like PewDiePie, but they give you six products and they give you um, a, a dollar threshold. In this case, it was four dollars. You have to guess in sequence the four products, not in like any order, but you have to guess the four of the six products that are under that price. So you have to guess four of six products that were under four dollars. Um, let's see if you can get it, because I'm going to tell you, the person on stage got it, and I also got it. There were antacids, you know, Rolaids, Tums, etc., etc. There was a bottle of balsamic vinegar. There was a bag of Snyder's plain pretzel rods. There was a, a carton of ready-to-pour hash browns. And then a couple other things that I forget, okay? But long story short, <laughs> I was like, dude. Oh, there was like a, a can of Barbasol shaving cream. I forget the other one. Long story short, it was the balsamic vinegar and the, uh, and the antacids that were over four bucks. And I was like, yeah, of course those are over four bucks. Antacids? Cheap to produce, maybe, but are also like a kind of medicine, so you pay a little health tax on top of it. And then balsamic vinegar. I mean, come on. That's going to be over... That's going to cost more than pretzel rods. Pretzel rods are literally just like baked wheat cylinders. Now, it depends on the size, but anyway. But I always thought it was BS on the prices, right? Like, it's one of the most popular game shows on the planet. I bet it is watched... Um, I, I, I would hazard to guess... That next to like 24 hour news networks, The Price is Right might be watched more than any other program by the 65 plus age demographic. And they love to buy things because they have the money. <laughs> Not all of them have a lot of money, I'm just saying on a generational level. Otherwise, why would there be so many weather tech ads on TV that are like HD glasses so when you're driving, you can see what you just hit? All right, that was a mean-spirited and ageist joke that I apologize for. And you should apologize, too, if you laughed. Regardless, um, I always thought it was BS that the show seems like it's kind of produced on like a shoestring budget. Let me, let me uh, explain how. In The Price is Right, if you're not familiar... Six uh, contestants get the ability to move from the bidding area, contestants row, up to actually play a game. So you're only... Like, you're giving away some meager prizes over the course of it. Like, you know, if you win in contestants row, you might win, like, a ping pong table or, like, you know, six backpacks for some reason. But you're, th those are not... You know, I think we might be able to make this work. Those are not major, major prizes. Uh, when you make it out of contestants row, so there's six big games played over the course of an entire Price is Right episode. Everybody knows a new car. That's cool. Don't get me wrong. So they might 
at maximum during this stage of the game give away two cars but they only do two new cars per episode and i'm not trying to like be like oh you know i don't even get out of bed for like a chevrolet malibu or whatever but like they're not giving away like even i don't even want to say like you know not top of the line cars they're giving away like basically the cheapest new cars money can buy and before you go like okay uh mr i i, I didn't know that you work for uh oh mr benotto you how's ferrari doing it's not like that okay first off i'm more of a toto wolf guy to begin with which I, is probably going to be the most controversial thing i say in this episode if you're a fan of f1 but then secondarily um look i just respect greatness okay but secondarily um you know, this, this is produced by CBS, man, and they're giving away, like, a, like Kia Fortes? You could at least give them, like, a, you know, like a Ford F-150 or something, like, or a Raptor. Yeah, dude, or a, <laughs> or a Rivian, you know, something ridiculous. You got the money for it. Okay, so now that, like, we've gone through this, the other four games, the prizes vary admittedly occasionally there's a game where they give out like 10 grand but even on the games where they could give out 10 grand usually people don't win the 10 grand dude like on uh, plinko plinko is literally just like the lottery you could win up to yeah but the average person wins like you know maybe 2500 bucks i'm not trying to say like i would turn down a free you know, quarter of a rack. I'm just saying. Wouldn't it suck to be on the prices right? And like, you get up there and you're like, well, I hope you like uh, feeling the wind in your hair. And you're like, oh, baby. It's going to be a new car. California emissions tested. Um, and then they're like, because we're giving you a chance to win a Dyson Bladeless fan! You'd be like, excuse me? And then the next lady gets... And so, like, not all the games on The Price is Right are created equal either. Like, some of them... The, the example I always go to is there's this game called Flip or Flop, where literally... First off, the game is no fun. And then secondarily, it's basically like a... They give you, like, a four-digit price tag. And then they're like, do you want to flip or flop the first two digits or the last two digits to, like, just rearrange their order? And sometimes they're like, yeah, I want to flip. And then you're like, okay, instead of being 2300 now it's 3200 And sometimes you're like, I want to flop. And you, you swap those last two digits. Um, it, it's just like, I, I if I traveled to California to go on The Price is Right... And then I played flip or flop to win a mattress that's probably, like, worse than my existing mattress. And then the next person got to play, like, you know, that cliffhanger game where it goes, yo di yo he yo di yo he yo di yo hoo hoo I would be very disappointed. It's like, it's, you know what? The Price is Right is kind of a lot like Fall Guys now that I think about it. You're up there in contestants row, you bid a uh, dollar more than somebody, all skill baby, and then you're like, man, I really hope I get fall ball, and they're like, nope, you're playing, you, you don't even get to play the game where you punch through those little paper holes in the wall to try to get some dollar bills. Instead, you're playing, um, oh, do you know what the best game on the price, At Plinko and Cliffhanger are amongst the most fun, don't get me wrong, but do you know what the actual best game on the price is right is? hole in one or two because it's hole in one you you guess the price every, every price is right game has the same theme like you know you guess the prices of some consumer goods that paid to be on the show um and if you the more you get right the closer a golf ball moves to a hole and if you sink it you win like five grand or something like that but whenever you miss the first shot, Bob Barker or Drew Carey, that cheeky son of a gun, you think all hope is lost. He comes in and he goes, that's why it's called hole in one. And he like smacks a sticker on it. Or two, you get a second crack at it. I can't remember if you get the same amount of money, but anyway. I like the prices right. But I, I will say, I think that for a game show, that thing is run on like a shoestring budget. You're like, you're giving out less money than Mr. Beast. 
How am I supposed to respect that? I, I get that they do run uh, a lot of episodes. <laughs> they do make a lot of episodes. So this, this run is slightly scary. We have a lot working out in our favor. Like the relic, for example, is, is a huge help. Maybe we should focus more on dodging. I'm also hoping we can maybe pick up some extra items. We probably don't need them, um, but it would be nice to have them. You're gonna, like, this is a room where just don't let yourself tilt. Because to be honest, you're gonna get hit here. It's not necessarily guaranteed, but the, the odds of it happening are, are quite high. Okay, okay, that's fine. We're, we're learning to live with it. I mean, you gotta be dead soon. How? I Honestly, I take issue with that one. I felt like I dodged that one. But at least to be on red hearts only, we know where we stand. I'm also, like, a little surprised that my uh, DPS impotence, for whatever reason here, like... Honestly, thought 8 rate of fire, 11.31 damage was a little bit better than this, but... It's okay. We got 3 HP. And again, like, it's not better to be exclusively on red hearts. <laughs> but at least we know where we are. I, I'd actually love to just kill the ragman and then, yeah, have you use your beams. We should be fine, but we might have to engage in some skillful gameplay at the end of this one. Bro. Not again. Not again! You gotta go, dude! How are you not dead yet? I've been peppering you. I I accidentally swapped targets. That's that's how. I don't like a confused enemy here. It scares me a little bit. Okay. Okay, we lived. <laughs> Magnificent. Well, the only way out is through. Yeah, yeah, daddy long legs. Daddy long legs! Thank you. Let's go! That half heart. That half heart, dude. This is where the bombs come in handy. Would absolutely love to see a relic payout here. It might even just do another room to try to get the relic payout. Don't need it. Don't need it. Oh my god. And Laz Rags actually might come in super handy. Uh, so, you know... Might have been up a little on the early side today. But uh, on the other hand... Pretty rare to encounter an Isaac episode with, with both this kind of banter and this kind of gameplay. Our strat here will be to live long enough for Daddy Long Legs to kill the boss. I can live with that. Help me. Help me. Anyway, I forgot what I was talking about the prices, right? I, did, I guess the bit was, like, I think if I was a, if I was writing for a sketch comedy show, it would be like, you know, the, you would get called up to be on the prices, right? And then the announcer would fake out that it's a car. They'd say things like, you know, you're gonna feel so fast behind the wheel and then they go like oh yeah baby here we go brand new car oh yeah let's go wonder what it's gonna be and then they'll go like of your new cheese and you're like okay a wheel of cheese i get it speaking of wheels and you're like okay here we go speaking of wheels four of them shiny and chrome oh baby what could it be chevrolet silverado maybe Dodge Ram, a Blu-ray copy of Mad Max Fury Road. So you can see how the bit would progress. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See you. See you.